Hello, cracks. How are you today? Thank you for coming. Well, today I'm going to do my very first Unreal Engine tutorial. Who am I to do Unreal Engine tutorial? Well, I just uh, play with the with the tool just for one year. I work in in the audiovisual industry, and I'm interested in Unreal Engine for virtual production. The thing is that uh, it looks like no one knows Unreal engine at all because it's a huge program with a lot of different areas to learn and it's, it's something that is always changing and growing and it has different applications. Natively it was used to create games, now it is used for simulations, for the uh, development of architectural designs and also for virtual production in, in my area. So what we are going today we are going to learn about something that I discovered very, very hidden, which is called the Bing Player. Okay. And uh, what is that? Well, initially, uh, because I work in the audio audiovisual industry, uh, I was I am really interested in, in layering videos uh, with the uh, foregrounds and backgrounds in the 3D space. And the thing is that uh, what you are seeing on the screen now, let me play this because I'm going to show you here. Okay, this guy, this video is something that is using a, an alpha channel in a, in a video to, to be able to see what's behind the guy and also to reflect shadows and, and uh, to, make, to cast shadows only and to make reflections on the floor, okay? And this is something that if you try it traditional ways in a real engine, it's really difficult. I started to, to research how to do that and let me show you some of the official pages because 99 uh, percent of people go to this with with this uh, workflow or, or way of doing things which is using the media framework overview okay and the media framework overview is something that you have in unreal to load both external images like jpeg files or png files if you are using transparency or open exr files and also using something called file media source, which are a, a standard a video files a, like MP4, MOV, AVI, and so on. The thing is that if you want to, to work with these kind of files, uh, I mean, it, it has a, a lot of problems. First of all, because uh, if, if you want to, to make transparencies, as you see in the video now, it's, it's really difficult because uh, you don't have alpha channels, so you have to, uh, in some times, to export a huge number of, of images, like you take a whole video, maybe 10 seconds, maybe one minute, you have to split it by frames in individual images, and that creates a huge uh, a list of files that you have to load one by one in Unreal Engine and then play the these IMG files one by one, which is totally crazy. On the other hand, if you work with um, the other media media source type, which is the, the file media source, you can work with video files, but uh, you don't you are not able to use the alpha channels and you cannot make trans transparencies. So uh, I was even working with a lot of tutorials from some colleagues, like for example, this one from Winbush, Using image sequences in, in Unreal Engine, which works fine, but this is crazy because you have to export um, image files one by one to, to be able to use the, the transparencies. And on the other hand, for example, this guy uh, was working really hard, uh, Joshua, to, to, to be able to cast shadows appropriately using uh, media plates or, or flat uh, MOV or AVI or MP4 files. Okay. So the thing is that, that is uh, something really, really incredible that a few people know, at least in the in the rank and file group of indie producers like us, that uh, uh, didn't put uh, much attention on something called this, Bing Video for Unreal Engine, okay? And this is interesting because this is a company that was bought, I have here the announcement, because this was a, a something developed by a company called Rad Game Tools um, in 
2021, it, the company was bought by Epic Games. And this company, it looks like it, it develops and has a lot of uh, implementation in, in, in a thousand of games. And you can even go today to the to the very to, to the old website be, before being bought by Epic Games. And here you can see that th this is the website. So it's, it's really, really very old website. And it's it's really interesting because uh, they they work to have like a set of tools and codex with a lot of efficiency just for video games, to manage media files in video games. And the technology was so good that Epic Games bought the company. You can even go to, to this uh, archive or even the Wayback Machine in archive.org and you can go back and uh, download all the version of the Bing uh, tools. Okay, so what are the Bing tools for? Well, the Bing tools uh, are for managing video files in, inside Unreal Engine in a much more efficient way. And that's what we are going to, to, to learn today. First of all, uh, let me show you that, uh, surprisingly, the Bing tools are included in Unreal Engine. Okay, so if I show you, for example, let me show you the, the path of the tool. If I go here to properties, I can show you that in this in this uh, route that I'm going to put uh, for you in the comments of this video, you can see the, that under Epic Games version engine binary third party, you have a directory called Bing, and you have a one tool called Bing Two for Unreal .exe. This tool, and I'm going to open it, is able to take any media file and convert it to a special um, format, which is the Bing uh, 2 format. And then you have to, to load it in Unreal Engine. So, first of all, uh, we are going to prepare any media file. Okay, so basically what you need to do is just go to your a standard provider of video files, or so maybe you can re uh, record something on, on your studio with a chroma key, or you can go to places like Embato Elements, like myself, and you put here chroma key, chroma key uh, in business, for example. And you can download in the stock video area, you can download videos like this, okay? When you load a video like this from the internet, normally you will download MP4 or MOV files that have the green included in the video, like the ones you take from your from your car, from your video recorder at the studio, okay? Good, so how does this work? Well, in the tool, and let me show you the, the file structure here, oops. Uh, you will download files like this. MOV files, okay? These are the two videos that we're going to work today with. And these videos, as you can see, is MOV file with the green um, with the green stuff included, okay? So, how are we going to work with that? Okay, we are going first to go to Adobe Premiere and create the version of the video with the alpha channel replacing the green stuff, okay? So how does it work? Well, I'm going to open here a project. Um, we are going to start this from scratch so you can, you can understand how it works, okay? So basically here, I just place in Adobe Premiere, you can, you can use any, any video editing tool, okay? In Adobe Premiere, I just put the file here and you can see that this is in green, okay? So we're going to do uh, with an effect, I'm going to create a sequence, and in the sequence I'm going to to load Ultra Key, and this Ultra Key is the effect in Adobe Premiere to take out the the green part and replace it with the alpha. Okay, so I drag and drop it here, double click on the file, and then move to Effect Controls, and I have here the control for the Ultra Key. Okay, first of all, uh, how do you work with Ultra Key? You just click on the on the eyedrop and then move over the screen and take the green color. 
All right, so you can see that everything is black. Okay, how can you be sure that when you export now the file, it's going to include the alpha channel? Okay, you have to do two things. First of all, here in the settings, you can work much better with the alpha channel. So you can see that the white thing is the thing that uh, will allow the, the, the video to pass. And then uh, you have a very good control in the ultra key called the pedestal. So if I increase the pedestal, you will see that the quality of the alpha channel goes much better, okay? So then when you finish this step, you have to go back to composite here. And now if I press play, you can see the guy moving with nothing behind. And how are you sure that the background is real and alpha? Is real and alpha? Okay, I'm going to move the layer above and I'm going to put something behind like this button tone, for example. Or you put something behind, something behind the guy. Let me mute this. You just put any layer behind the guy, and you will see that you can see uh, through the transparency. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. So the video is now ready to export with the transparency. Okay. Now, another part that is really important when, when you prepare the file for Unreal Engine. Uh, when we do the export, there are not many types of files that accept alpha transparency. If you go to the to the internet, you will see that a few codecs allow that. Okay, for example, uh, you have to differ, and this is something that you have to learn a part of this video. It's not the scope that you have to let what, what are the the capsules or the um, let me let me find the right way for it. What is MP4? The container, okay. One one thing is the container, which is the extension of the file of the video, like MP4 or MOV. And another very different thing is the codec that you are using to um, encode the video. All right. So, for example, uh, the the container MP4 can contain anything with any codec, but the more common codecs that work with alpha used to be encapsulated with the MOV extension, which is uh, um, related to QuickTime and uh, the MOV file, okay? These MOV files uh, can use different codecs. The, one of the most common is ProRes, and there are another ones that support transparency, like, um, like uh, Cine, let me check, uh, GoPro, the GoPro format, okay? Move. GoPro Alpha, yes. There are codes, a GoPro Cineform that also supports Alpha, okay? But how can you know which formats are in Adobe Premiere? Okay, let me check here that uh, when you try to export the video, here you have to select uh, containers, not code, containers that support codecs that allow the Alpha channel to work. So. For example, uh, two extensions that can work are H.265, HVC, and another one, which is the most common, is M MOV, which is here uh, called QuickTime, okay? So I will select QuickTime, and then under QuickTime, you will see here that you can select more in depth the format of, of what is, how will the codec work inside the QuickTime MOV format. So to support alpha, for example, you can use Apple ProRes 4444, okay, this one. And there is another one called C um, the GoPro one, which is here, GoPro Cineform, okay? These two support alpha, okay? I'm going to select the Apple ProRes 4444, and on top of that, for example, you can change here the resolution if you want to lower the resolution because i downloaded the 4k video you can also change the fps i am in, U in europe so we use 25 and here at the bottom you will see the encoding of the color scheme which is rec 709 and the depth is this is the really important part in the depth you have to put something that includes the alpha uh, an alpha channel so this eight B P C plus alpha. This is the one that you, that you have to to select. Okay. So now, 
if I export, I'm not going to export now because I already did it. But if you export now, you will create an MOV file. And let me show you it. Let me show you the MOV file. This MOV file, well, this is the original. And the MOV file converted, we won't be able to see it because uh, with VLC, with the VLC player, I'm not able to open the alpha channel on this format. Okay, you have to download the codec and, and so on. But to make sure that this is the, the one working, what you can do as well is go to Premiere, go back to Premiere, include the exported file in the project and open it. I'm going to do it in just a second so, so you can see that it works. Okay. Let me let me open the project again in Premiere. So here I'm going to include one second because I need to find out where's the file. Okay, this is my file. And I normally, because the extension doesn't allow you to put uh, more information, I just put the name of the file. As you can see here, I cannot open in VLC, okay? And this is the file that I exported. I put a uh, underscore 8VPC plus alpha to identify it because the extension will be the same, okay? But what I can do is I can drag and drop it in Premiere, okay? I can double click it somewhere in the in the in the sequence and then I can see that let me check. This is the one, sorry. I was I was dragging another one, this one. I can see here that it has it has transparency as you can see here. Okay, and it's smaller because I exported it in, in a lower resolution. I can scale to frame size. And you can see that it has also the uh, transparency in these MOV files. So uh, don't be tricked by things like double clicking on the files because you can double click it and maybe VLC doesn't allow you to, to see the transparency. Okay, you have to open it with software that is able to read the transparency codex. Like, for example, Resolume or uh, Adobe Premiere Pro or in Unreal Engine, as we will see. Okay, so we have now the exported files, the exported file with the QuickTime MOV extension and the codec um, Apple ProRes 444. So now we are going to use the tool that is provided by Bing inside Unreal Engine, which is this one Bing Two Tools for Unreal. And in this case, I'm going to put the path of the file. So I just here copy it, the directory. I press enter. And you can see that I have here my file. Okay, the MOV. I can play it, but it opens it with VLC, so it won't work. Okay. But um, there was a play a, a Bing player as well in, in this tool. I don't know if it is in this directory. Or maybe, if you are interested, you can download the player from the very, from the very old website as well. Okay, this is another option to, to, to load the reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the file. I'm going to press here. I just select the file here, and then I click on Bink it here on the, on the bottom left. I click it, and you will see a lot of options. Okay. You don't need to change the extension because the extension of the file to be recognized by uh, Unreal, it has to be BK2, which is Bing version two, all right? You have also, uh, uh, you can also create HDR videos and also different sizes and resolution, but we won't talk about that now. And it's really important that here in the middle of the screen, you mark the use alpha plane and change from input file. So this, this checkbox by default is do not include the alpha plane and I'm going to enable it, include the alpha plane and leave it a change directly from the input file. When you mark this and I click on Bing, in the same directory, it's going to take some time and in the same directory is going to export this MOV file with the transparency to a Bing file with the transparency, all right? 
So it takes some seconds. Uh, let's let it finish. All right, done. Perfect. So this is the uh, this is the exported file. As you can see, the size of the file is much smaller because the MOV was 250,000 and this is 35,000 kilobytes. So it's much better and it includes the compression as well as the as the alpha channel. Okay. So for the moment I'm going to close the converter and I'm going also to close Adobe Premiere Pro and we're going to Unreal Engine now to do the second part of the tutorial. Okay. First of all, uh, what I did for this video was to select was to select this this uh, format. I selected the film and video film video and live events. I created a UA tutorials project and I and I included the starter starter content. Okay. So next, how does it work? Well, I'm going to delete everything to start from scratch. So let me just sorry, let me just delete all this. Delete the the plane. Delete all these textures and so on. Oops. Force delete. Force delete. All right. So first of all, very important is that we need to create a movies directory. This movies directory is mandatory if you want to export as well the content of your project to to someone someone else. Okay. And here you can you just click on Show Explorer, Show in Explorer, and as you can see here, in this directory, I have already included the. Let me show you. Here, I have included two files. These are the two video exports that I downloaded for the Embato platform, put them in Adobe Premiere, and then exported. As a Bing file uh, with the Bing tool, and then move it to the movies folder. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is go inside the movies folder, and I'm going to create. A, first of all, and we need to enable the plugin. Okay. So we go to settings, plugins, and you can name it Bing B I N K, and you have hit here Bing Media. Implements a media player using Bing. It's in version 2.0. You will see that a lot of tools in Bursta production do have uh, experimental versions and beta versions. No, this is really mature. It's, it's incredible that uh, it, this is, a, for me, it was really a discovery. Okay. So once you enable the plugin, you have to restart the project and then we can start working. So, for example, in this level, I'm going to create natively, you go here, right click, go to miscellaneous and up here you select Bing Media Player. Implements a media player asset that can play movies and other media. You click on this and I will call it Bing Media Player. Okay, this is the, the object. I will double click on it and it works very similar to the file media source. So you go here to the to the file or, or URL, you click on it. And I can select, for example, uh, this video, Plano Entero. I will open it. It's, it's, as, as you can see, it has a BK2 extension. I open it, and as you can see, it works. Okay? So, save it. I close this window, and then we're going to create a media texture for it. So, right-click on the Bing Media Player, create media texture. I'm, call, I'm going to call it MT underscore. Bing. I will double click it. You will see it also opens and works. Save, close it. Next, we are going to create the material. So we click right click on the media texture and then create material. A standard name like M underscore Bing. And as you see here, we have a material already. Okay. What's the problem at this moment? Is that you can see these squares that are really ugly, but this is because the kind of material you need to use is a, has to support the transparency. 
So this is the good part that here you can just select the material, go down here under blend mode and select. Instead of opaque, you select masked. And after that, you will see that you have now enabled the opacity mask connector. So you just take the alpha channel from here, you drag it to the opacity mask, and voila, you have now everything in the plane working, all right, here, as you can see. So let's apply, let's save it, and we have already the material supporting the alpha channel. Next, we're going to create a plane so to put the image on. So we just go here, uh, we create, we have the floor. Let's create a plane here in shapes plane. When I create anything in Unreal, the first thing I do is going to the location part on the right and reset the location. And as you can see, because, because it is at the same level, I move it up. I press the F key in the keyboard, so I have it in focus, okay? So before rotating and doing anything, I just uh, drop, uh, drag and drop the material on top of that, as you see, okay? So as you can see, now the, the plane has the material. So what can we do now? Well, you see that uh, it is not rotated, so I'm going to ret rotate it like this, 90, 90 degrees. And uh, well, maybe let me let me disconnect this connector in the in the material, so we can see better what we are doing. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the opacity mask. I apply. So with this format, we can see what we are doing much better because we see the square. So now, uh, after rotating it, we have to rotate it vertically, like this, so it's 90 degrees. Click OK. And as you can see, it's in the middle, so I, I drag it up and press the N key to put it just close to the floor. And then, because it is a square, we need to change the proportion. So I go to the properties here in the scale. I unlock the icon here. Unlock the lock, and I put on the on the white side, which I think is the first one. Yes, in this white side, the proportion in sixteen by nine videos, like the one we exported, like for example, full HD videos or four K videos, is one point seven 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 seven. This is the proportion. Okay, so you just click enter, and after doing that, you will see the proportion good on the screen. And then if you want to do it a bigger or smaller, you just click on the lock again. And then when you move the scale, you will see that everything moves perfectly to match the size. Okay, so let's put like this size. I'm going to press down again. So it falls on the floor, good. And now we are going to go back to the material again and connect back the alpha transparency with the opacity mask. I click on apply, save, and now you can see that it is working. So you have the transparency and you have it, you have everything here uh, perfectly. Okay. So uh, let me just recap what are the pros of the, and the cons of, of this. But before that, uh, we are going to. Uh, uh, know anything, know something about the object model because, of course, if we like this, we want to work with the object model in the blueprints. Okay, so I just created a couple of blueprints here. No, this is not here, it's in, in movies. No, oh, it's in the sorry, it's in the, in the open level blueprint. Here you can see this blueprint and what I'm doing here. Well, it's really interesting that uh, I created this variable, for example, and as you can see, if you create a new bar, you will see that when you drag and drop the format, you can type Bing and you will see here the Bing object model. 
So how I did create this one, Bing MP is a Bing Media, Bing Media Player object reference here. Okay. And now you click on the eye, you save it. And on the right, in the details panel, you can select which media, Bing Media Player we are working with. And on the right, I'm going to select here the only one that we created at the beginning of the tutorial. Okay. So this is the variable that is going to hold which media player we are working with. I will, we click on compile, we click on save. And as part of that, you can see the object model dragging the variable, clicking on get. And here, you just leave the context sensitive enable and you just go down, you open media. You will see here Bing Media Player, and here you have all the object model of the Bing Media Player. You can get the URLs, you can play, you can stop, you can request a status of the player if it is paused, if it is looping, if it is not looping. You can rewind it like any any like any media any media player. Okay, so based on that object model then you can start creating your own things. For example, here, as you can see, I have created two keyboard events. So when I press one, I open the URL from Bing here. As you can see here, target is the Bing Media Player. And you can put here the URL. The URL has to, you have to put here the directory of the file. So I put uh, movies forward slash and then the name of the file including the extension and then after that opening i go automatically to play on the on the second on the number two event when i press two in the keyboard i open a different file and you can see here that it'll play afterwards and here what i'm doing is with event begin play i connect it to a stop so when I start the game, everything is stopped, and then we drag it, we launch it manually. Okay, I'm going to compile it, save it, and let me check if it works. Okay, so I'm going to play, and this should stop, right? Play. Yes, as you can see, the video is completely stopped. Now I'm going to press one. The first video plays. Okay. And now I'm going to press two, and the second video plays. Okay. So this is uh, more or less how it works. Okay. As you can see, it's a, a really good. There are a lot of pros and and cons in this format. Okay. It not, it's not everything good. <laughs> so, for example, for the pros, as you can see, you we can work with just one file, and it works with the alpha chart. Uh, the second pro is that this format is very fast and very and very light. And if you go to the internet, you will see a video from this guy from, I think he's from India, who did a benchmark. This is really interesting. He did a benchmark. As you can see, he did a benchmark playing 30 videos a standard resolution on, and four ultra high resolution videos at the same time. So 34 videos. And with the videos, with any videos playing, 100 FPS. Uh, using MP4, 70 FPS. Using Bing, 70 FPS. So Bing 2 is much faster to render that. And as you can see here, I'm going to put it full screen. He created the model in Unreal Engine to put put in a lot of screen in a city, and he was just uh, comparing the media play of uh, the standard format with the Bing format, just using the the very same the very same uh, files, but converted to the Bing file. And you can see that the results in performance in Bing are much much better so these are the pros of the of the bing format okay what which are the cons well there are 
uh, uh, some cons. As you can see, the first con is that uh, we need to convert the file. So we need to do like two steps, uh, go to Premiere, import the file, export to a ProRes or or Cine or, or GoPro format with alpha channels, and then add another additional step with the Bing for a real tool to export it to the BK, BK2 extension. Um, there is, as far as I know, there is no direct export from Adobe Premiere to the BK2 extension, but it exists. I don't know if this uh, coded or, or export uh, was included in the past, or maybe the Bing, the Raptor company, the Raptors company sells it. But on the internet, there are screenshots. Let me show you if, if I can, if I can find them. Yes, here you can find that on the internet there are screenshots of people exporting uh, directly being to files from a, a, an export dialog uh, from Adobe. So I think that the export tool exists, but we don't know if it is just a paid tool or we can just download the, the source code if it is a, a public domain because Rad Tools is a private company. It was bought by Unreal Engine, and I don't know if Unreal Engine is applying the open source concept to these Bing uh, uh, two tools. Okay, this is something that we will have to, to investigate. If you know something about that, of course, feel free to leave it in the comments. And also, uh, the other con that this has, it, it is that it is not um, synchronized and it doesn't work with the export of level sequences, which is really bad. <laughs> this is really bad. I'm going to show you uh, an example that I did. So basically, uh, I went to here to cinematics, and in cinematics, I created this level sequence where I just put the... Let me let me put this here. Oops. Here I created this level sequence, and this level sequence uh, has some camera movements. But the problem is that there is no way to synchronize the Bing Media with the level sequence. So as you know, for example, here in the level sequence, you add a track. You go here to Media Track. And in the media track here, this is where you control when you work with image source files, PNG files, so open EXR files one by one by frame, or when you work with, with MP4 files or standard video formats. So you can sync the media source and the media plate, and it will sync every single frame of the video with every single frame of the export of the level sequence. But in this case, we don't have, at least I haven't found a way to synchronize the Bing format frame by frame with the export of level sequences. Today, uh, we are in 2023, in September. We don't know if maybe in the future. Uh, I, I saw someone that was trying to, to request this feature. I voted for the feature, but I don't know if it will be embedded, uh, included soon. Because, uh, as you know, the things are, de are delicate now. They have like a, a layoff of, you can see it in the news. There were many layoffs at Epic uh, this week. 16% of the of, of the employees were laid off. But I read, I went through the through the news release, and it looks like uh, the people working at the core development of Unreal Engine are still in the company. So this is good. Okay, what is the effect of exporting the level sequence um, uh, with this? With this, the problem is that, as you can see here, I can try to to export it. Just at least at the the first frame, that so you can see how it works. So I'm going to click here, um, render local. And as you can see, well, it is not moving because I stopped it. But if you leave it played, you will see that the video starts playing and the frames do not go accordingly. I'm going to show you 
the export that I did uh, some minutes ago. So you can see um, the result. Okay, let me let me check. It is here. Yes, this is the this is the export. Okay, this is the export of the of the video, and as you can see, the synchronization of the bing with the level sequence export uh, does not work. Uh, and as far as I know, I don't know uh, a troubleshooting for that. Let's see if, if this works in the future. Okay, so that's all from my side. Uh, let me know your comments. Let me know if after discovering this tool, you are going to use it in your projects. I think it's really, really good to put uh, automatic screens in, in the startup of games, to put it in screens in televisions, like for us in virtual production. And uh, and also to use transparency and alphas, but on the con you cannot use it uh, with the level sequence export, but uh, it's possible to use them with the with the with the real time um, with the real time composure composure exports. Okay, uh, some things that need to be developed. In this case, I'm seeing that the the quality of the shadows is not stable. As you can see, the reflections work work okay with the with the shiny material. But if I press play here, you will see that the shadows. I press play, and you will see that the shadows uh, they do very strange things. I don't know if maybe this is the because I'm working with with a computer that has a a not very common video card. I am using a Intel a Intel NUC computer with a A770M video card. Maybe in, in the in the NVIDIA it works. I don't know because I'm having problem with the DirectX 12 in the computer at the moment. Okay, but let me know. Let me know if the shadow work for you. If you try to replicate the the thing in this video, uh, we'll keep in contact. Let me know about the videos. Uh, sorry for the Spanish community. <laughs> Uh, because I did a video in English, but as you know, as part of the of the community of of Ramiro's Lab and and Off World uh, Live uh, community, which is a good plugin, you have to install it and, and use it to import and export Spout and MDI. Uh, we are uh, uh, this is in English, so <laughs> let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. Y si hablas español, también también me puedes contactar y hablamos español. Chao, chao. Take care. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you in the next video. Chao, chao.